Now, the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, former President John Dramani Mahama, is expected to officially unveil his running mate for the 2020 presidential elections today. A National Executive Committee is reported to be in a meeting in which John Dramani Mahama will present a former Director General of the National Development Planning Commission, Dr. Isaac Banaman Nimoy Thompson, a former Minister of Health and Deputy Campaign Manager for the 2020 elections, Mr. Yeah. or a former Finance Minister, Dr. Kwabna Dufour, as his choice of a running mate, and Dr. Cadman Mills, brother of the former, the late former President John Ebenzata Mills, for consideration. Let's join Quincy Parker Wilson, who is at the NDC's headquarters for an update. Right, Parker, uh, if you can hear me, what's the atmosphere like at the NDC's headquarters? Daniel, currently at the NDC headquarters, there is a National Council of Elders meeting going on. And this meeting, according to my source, that the meeting is considering the nomination by the flagger of the party, John Germani Mahama, and the nomination for his running mate, as my source has confirmed to me, is Professor Jenana Opokwajiman, former vice, uh, uh, vice chancellor of the uh, University of uh, Cape Coast. So that is the nomination or the name that the National Council of Elders are considering. Now, what happens after the meeting is that the National Council of Elders will not move to the National Executive Committee where the flag bearer himself will be in that meeting and then the National Council will communicate their decision to, to, to him. And my source tells me that the National Council, as we speak, indeed are accepting the nomination that Professor Jinano Pokwajiman should partner the uh, f uh, former President John Germani Mahama into the December polls. And the concerns about whether or not he has some charisma, uh, the party tells me that the decision to nominate here actually for the running mate position is that, I mean, Prof Mills at the time wasn't known, uh, he wasn't a party person really. Same as uh, Professor Opokajuman. And they believe that she will warm herself up into the game and will bring some level of uh, different kind of politics uh, going forward into the December polls. And finally, she has a constituency of the academia and they believe that with that the those within the academia will support her course and being the first female running mate as well they are playing the, the gender uh, ticket for the December post so these are the information I picked up from the meeting going on currently here at the NDC headquarters so do we know what time all this is going to be settled and finally communicated to the public Parker Right, so the meeting, the National Council of Elders, I'm told that in just about an hour, they're wrapping up with the meeting. And then when they are done, then they move on to the National Executive Council. And with that, just within an hour, they'll finish. So we are hoping that by two, the party officially communicates the running mate to partner John Germani Mahama into the Zimbabwe post to us by 2 p.m. By 2 p.m., Professor Jane Nanopokwa Jemai. Um, you mentioned that they want to pick someone who has um, um, a constituency which is academia and someone who is not a really inside political figure. Um, what informed uh, their choice, you know, of these characteristics um, uh, in picking a running mate? Do we know? I mean, essentially, the party is not looking at uh, the succession plan. Uh, my source tells me the former president is looking at a running mate that will end his term. And you know that the former president, if he should win the 2020 election, would only go for one term. And if he's exiting, he's going to exit with the vice president. Then the party will not bring in a fresh candidate and a fresh running mate as well. So that is one of the key reasons why he settled on Prof. Opokwajiman. And again, uh, whilst being the Minister of Education, she spearheaded the Muhammad Day Sina High School Community Project across the country. And they believe that this went down well with those within academia. His performance as uh, a vice chancellor also as well will give her some credit so with some right. of these positives they believe that her addition to the ticket of John Mahama for the 2020 election is a done deal and would advance the electoral fortunes of the NDC in the coming election
Crazy Parker Wilson, thank you very much. Uh, keep an eye out on things that will come back to you when we have more. Dr. Ali Dusey, the Senior Lecturer, Political Science Department of the University of Ghana, and Head of Political Desk here at Joy News, Evans Mensah, emphasized the need for the NDC to make a choice that will resonate with the largest number of voters and one who appeals to young people. There are specific and generic criteria, criteria that you can use to select a random mate. The first thing has to do with the fact that the random mate should be able to work with the flag bearer. So the vice president should be able to work with the president. So I don't think a flag bearer would choose a candidate that he or she would not be able to work with. So there should be one, an element of compatibility. Then two, that person should have a little bit of governance skills. Because as a running mate or a vice president, you are just a heartbeat away from the presidency. So you should have the skills to, to manage the country in the absence of the president. Right, Dr. Sedu. Okay. Then three, mm. he should appreciate but not just choosing a candidate that is going to partner the flag bearer. But in the event of anything, that candidate should be able to lead the party into subsequent elections or next elections, whichever comes earlier. So that person himself should be a presidential material and, and should have a constituency within the party. It's very important. Now, when you come back to the specifics, there are several ways that a random mate can balance the ticket of the flag bearer. In the history of the Fourth Republic, we've had about four or five balancing elements. One, ethnicity. People always choose choose their tickets to, to choose candidates to balance their ticket based on ethnicity. We have regionalism. That is the region that you come from. Central regionalism is we also look at gender. Gender has been coming in strongly, and then to some extent, age and then experience. But what we haven't seen over, what we have not put into consideration over the years, is also an element of uh, of resources. If especially in an opposition party, the candidate that is being selected to run with the flag bearer should be somebody who can also raise funds or bring a lot of resources to bear on the campaign. So when you look at these both the generic and specifics, then you can see that. Nemo Thompson represents maybe a specific constituency. From, from the name, I think uh, maybe he's gone from Greater Accra region. And if you look at the, the history of, if I'm right, if you look at the history of the NDC, they have always been a section of the, of the party that agitates that they haven't, they haven't bought, given the Ghana people the kind of prominence that they need in the balance of ticket of the party moving forward, mm. they need to get somebody who should be able to balance it. But if you look at the campaign manager... The front runners for me have always been um, uh, Professor Boche, Dufour, um, uh, Nana Opokwajiman, obviously. And, and of course, uh, we all know that uh, Alex Moore was also being, being considered. Now, the, the, the decision is Mahamas to make. If, I've heard a lot of people say, well, Jinana Pokwajim, and I think um, uh, Dr. Doc also makes the same point about uh, Jane being being the best fit for them. I, 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 I doubt if that is as clear cut as that, and I, I actually disagree. It, it is the best the best decision to make for for John Muhammad. But again, he he only has the prerogative to make. I mean, for me. Why would any political party need a running mate? The, the central question cut out cut out all the all the noise around this. The only reason the NDC needs to make a running mate decision for now is because they have an election to prosecute on December seventh. The only consideration for me is they want to win the December 7 election, pure and simple. The constitutional issues as in the person's uh, ability to um, play their role effectively and efficiently, et cetera, I believe will become very relevant after they win the elections. If they lose elections, none of those things matter. So the number one thing that John Mahama must consider, and I believe it's the NDC's main consideration, is who can help John Mahama 
win the 20, 27, 2020 elections December 7th. Can't if, if Sanana Tokwajima the only... do that? Sorry, say that again? Can Prof help John Mahama to win the election in 2020? Yes, he can. And I was going to answer the question. You should answer that question, who is best placed to help John Mahama win elections? We need to look back to 2016 and ask the question, why did the NDC lose a 2016 election? If you answer that question, then you have to fix the challenges which accounted for their defeat. Now... This, that question, why they lost the 2016 elections, is an obvious, comes with an obvious answer. If you look at the um, results that they got in 2016, the historical one million votes that they normally, NDC, will, will carry into any elections, they lost that. They lost that. In the fourth Republican uh, um, elections history, the NDC had always come to the party with five million votes. And then plus or minus, and then if at the MPP two plus or minus, you win after you account for your five million. They failed to bring that to the 2016 elections. It comes back to the fundamental question of somebody who can partner John Mahama to galvanize their base. Point is, the base that the NDC had relied on for decades to win elections somehow were apathetic, and this was confirmed by many of the polling that we did. And, and the voter turnout in 2016. So uh, we are looking at Nimoy, we are looking at Nimoy Thompson and Prosana Nopoko Ajimai now. None of them, from what you are saying, really strike me as your grassroots campaigners, your party people who have been dying the wolf for a while. What do you think? That's exactly my point. That if any of these two individuals are in fact in the reckoning, and any of them really get the nod, I will be astonished the world health organization who has revealed ghana is one of the countries driving the increase in covid 19 cases in africa who says 190,000 people are expected to die from the disease in the continent ghana is one of the countries with the highest number of cases dr mary stephen explains why this is worrying the, 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 the number of cases you see when you test depends on the kind of transmission pattern you have. So really, if you have community transmission, you will pick a, quite a number of cases when you test. And even if you do not test, for instance, we, we said earlier 20%, the 15% will present with severe disease and 5% will, uh, with critical illness. So you have 20%, which is quite a number of cases, in, especially in big countries. So they will present in the hospitals at the end of the day, or you, they, it will present as community debt, which will be picked. So, but if you have a country that is reporting uh, sporadic cases or cluster of cases, no matter how much you test, you will still not pick so many cases. So it actually depends on the kind of uh, transmission okay. you have in okay. country. What you're saying is that that argument is moot. So, 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 like I said, yes, it, it depends okay. on the transmission. Okay. The number of cases you pick, it depends on the transmission pattern. So if you have community cases, you will pick more cases. Uh, community transmission, you will pick more cases. Definitely. In Africa, we are seeing an increasing trend uh, in the number of uh, COVID-19 cases. Um, 10 countries are driving this outbreak. And, uh, of course, we, we know that South Africa is reporting the highest number of cases. Uh, but uh, Nigeria and Ghana are also part of these 10 countries. So we still see increasing number of daily cases on the continent. And if, if we don't ramp up um, our public health and those uh, physical uh, measures, um, we, we, we might continue to see additional number of cases on the continent. So, so basically, we need to ramp up all the capacities for, for dictation, testing, uh, isolation, treatment, and uh, contact tracing, including the preventive uh, measures by the community. So, so we all have a personal responsibility in addition to what uh, government is, is doing to make sure that uh, we do not um, expose more people to the risks of contracting COVID-19. Mm. Of course, if people continue to interact, no proper hand washing, uh, they are not observing the one meter distance, they are not wearing their face masks, you expect that 
that cases will continue to increase and doubling time will continue to shorten. And with this, we will you know, continue to see increase in number of cases. So basically, we need to make sure that uh, these capacities are on ground and uh, unnecessary interaction is actually being avoided or if it must be done, uh, we must have facilities to um, make sure that we reduce the risk of exposure. Mm. Now, Majority Leader Sergei Mensa Bonsu is this week expected to firm up mid-year mid review presentation date with Finance Minister Ken Ofriata. The two would have to agree on the date, even though the presentation would be carried out by the Finance Minister. Sources say Parliament had initially proposed a third week of this month. However, this meeting would give a specific date. The Finance Minister is expected to use a presentation to announce a fresh package that would help stabilize the economy in the midst of COVID-19. Well, meanwhile, economist Gopher Bokwin says government's intervention so far in managing the economic impact of the pandemic have been satisfactory. He spoke with Inshirado on Joy Prime's morning show, Prime Morning. I am very hopeful. I am very hopeful. And the reason I say so is that this is not an isolated case. We are not in this alone as a country. Mm -hmm. uh, across the world, you see the challenges. To that extent, it gives hope that we are all working together to come out of this. So I'm very hopeful. So far, uh, I think in terms of the interventions, uh, they are satisfactory largely. Um, there's, there isn't a lot of data to assess other interventions interventions to see how efficient we have been. Mm. But I think overall, as a country, um, we have made good progress in, in how we have we are navigating um, ourselves through these challenges. But in the last couple of weeks, because of the political business cycle, the political activity, it looks like um, it is overshadowing the health concerns. And, and therefore, we are losing the balance in, in, in our approach towards uh, uh, containing or managing COVID-19. Right. and the economy. All right. Uh, Governor Bokwin is sharing his thoughts there. We'll bring you uh, the latest from Kumase. As we have been reporting, workers of the Metro Mass Transit, they have called off uh, their strike this morning. They were protesting and paid salaries. We'll bring you more uh, on the marketplace, which is in about uh, 20 minutes from now. That's it for business. The news continues after this break. Good afternoon and welcome to the sports segment with me, Oreku Wampofu. As you know, I'm still reporting live from home and we do start off with some local stories where some Black Stars players do resort to the use of Black Magic, also known as Juju, to help them play football. Now, this was according to former Black Stars midfielder Derek Watin in an interview on the Joy Sports link on Joy FM last Saturday. Now, it had been rumored that some players, particularly in the Black Stars camp, do patronize the use of Black Magic ahead of their games in order to enhance performances and protect themselves. Now, according to Derek Watson, he has seen at first hand some players who do use Black Magic within the Black Stars camp. Everybody have what he believes in that he helps him to play. So, so you, you've seen teammates yeah, do this? I've seen a lot of things. I've seen a lot of things, you know. I see. Like I've what? Seen, I've seen a lot of things, and it's really, really bad. Some like what? You see things, you know. Sometimes some of the, <laughs> it's, you know, some players cannot even go to their rooms, you know. They were the kind of smell that is there is really, really tough. So for me, like every player know whatever, when he does, he can help him to play very well and can help him to move good. I'll make an example on uh, when we were in a uh, Cup of Nations in South Africa, I think 2013. Mm. After the tournament, things went bad for us. Where we supposed to reach? We were, uh, we didn't reach where we supposed to reach. So we all have a meeting with the coaches and everyone and everybody's talking and I was sitting quiet. I don't want to talk, but I know the kind of things some of people are doing and for me to not change anything. So I was sitting down quiet and 
I didn't talk, and I someone said, why I'm not talking? I said, yeah, there's nothing to talk about. It's finished. There's nothing to talk about. He said, no, but I need to talk. I need to. Then the coach, the coach said, no, Derek, you need to talk. You are, you are a senior player, and we want to hear your voice with this conversation. And we're supposed to go and play the third place against Mali. So what I say to them is like, look, we are all here to defend Ghana. But please, whoever is here, whatever you know you can do for the team to move forward, the team to win the games, do it. Don't do anything to destroy any player so that you will be in that position to play. It's no good. We are all here to defend the nation. So whatever you know, if you know that you can pray for Ghana to win, do it. If you know that you can eat orange for Ghana to win, do it. You understand? But for me, it's not good to do something against your brother or your friend so that you have the chance to play. That's what I say. That's the only thing I say. I didn't say anything again. And I left because me, whenever we go to the dressing room, I have my Bible with a Jesus picture on the, I put it under my jersey. Before the game, I read some 23 three times and just pray, go on my knees and pray and go to the pitch. That's what I've been doing all the time. I go to the pitch, I pray also. That was former Black Stars midfielder Derek Barton speaking on Joy Sports Link uh, last Saturday, but from a former Black Stars midfielder to a current one, and that's the captain, Andrea Yu, who scored his 14th goal in the championship uh, this season to seal Swansea City's 2-1 victory over Sheffield Wednesday. Now the 30-year-old uh, he stepped forward to double the host lead at the Liberty Sports Stadium with a 66th minute penalty just 10 minutes after Ram Brewster had opened the scoring. Now, Ayu is currently enjoying his best scoring form in the league season in his career with a contribution of 14 goals and six assists in the English second division so far. And you can see there are 14 goals, six assists, averaging 89 minutes per game. Uh, certainly, he is the man in form. After the game, the Black Stars captain took to Twitter to encourage the team, saying that always good to score, but most importantly, getting the three points. Still, we keep going. But that would be it in terms of the sports segment here. We do have some more sports stories for you at 2 p.m. when Sports Today comes your way. But my name is Eric Wampofo, and do remember to stay safe.